but are the fines from the city enough to actually dissuade someone from doing this kind of thing again? Two News investigates as Jake Taylor looks into the actual penalties they could face from the partially demolished building. That's where he's joining us live, Jake. That's right. Now, the very first thing I want to do is give you some breaking information. I just barely got off the phone with uh, with Carl Christensen. He's the owner of Move On Demolition, and he says that he was actually the person in that excavator doing the demo. He was taking apart this building. He tells me the owner of the building ordered him to demolished the entire thing. He says that there was no confusion, no miscommunication. He says he was shown some state documents from the owner and that he believed the owner had all the permits necessary. Now today I've been looking into what may be the fines attached with this mistake and I've learned they go farther than some of what we heard yesterday. John Paulson with Paulson Construction has renovated and restored historic and religious buildings across Utah. When he saw the mistaken demolition of the historic Fifth Ward building, it hit a personal note with me. Others have personal connections as well. Jacob Rueda remembers visiting it when it was club sanctuary just after September 11th, crying with a group of friends. It was a powerful moment, you know, but we had it at the steps, which not, are not there anymore. Along with his sadness, there's anger. This is a sign of carelessness. That is what this is. This is this is carelessness. Paulson says in his industry, something like this is simply no mistake. If they actually had any any experience, they would know the rules and they would know better. So what is the price for this unplanned and unpermitted pulverization of the property? Well, the city says one fine they won't know the total amount of until they know the cost to fix this project as well. Two other fines of $100 each, but today they told me those $200 in fines add up every single day until this building is fully fixed. Whatever damage they caused, rebuild it because they owe it to the city. They owe it to the people who have a connection to this building. If it takes one year, that's $73,000 in those accruing fines. Paulson says fines from the city may be the least of the problem for the people who did this. There's federal federal violations, there's state air quality violations. So yeah, it's 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 amazing that somebody, I guess, felt like they could get away with it. Adding it's a public health concern as well. Old buildings do have hazardous materials, call it asbestos, call it lead. Now others had big plans for this building. Tomorrow I have an exclusive interview with the two men who were planning on buying this building. They had big plans for it. What they have to say about what led to all of this. Live in Salt Lake, Jake Taylor, KUTV, 2 News.